let's look at this nice problem from the 1988 Canadian Math Olympiad. So this involves roots of polynomials. Our goal is to find a number a so that the polynomial f of x, which is 1988 x squared plus ax plus 8891, and the polynomial g of x, which is 8891 x squared plus ax plus 1988, have a common zero. Okay, so let's just jump into the solution. So let's write f of x and g of x in this other way related to their zeros. So I'm gonna write f of x as 1988 times x minus r times x minus u. And so this has zeros r and u. And I needed to factor the 1988 out because that's the coefficient of x squared. Likewise, we can take g of x and write it as 8,891 times x minus r times x minus v. So the important thing here is that they share this root r. But now let's see where this takes us. So now let's notice that if we take g of x minus f of x, on the one hand, we'll have x minus r times some new polynomial, which I'll call h of x. We don't actually really care what that new polynomial is. It's in fact a linear polynomial. The important thing here is that we have a root of x minus r, and that's simply from factoring this x minus r out. But now let's take the difference in this expanded form. So we'll have 8,891x squared minus 1988x squared, which you can simplify down to 6,903x squared. And then we'll have ax minus ax, those obviously cancel. And then we'll have 1988 minus 8,891. Oh, but that's gonna simply give us minus 6903. But observe that we can factor this 6903 out, and then we'll have x squared minus 1, which factors to x minus 1 times x plus 1. So now let's observe that the left hand side has x minus r as a factor, and then the right hand side has factors x minus 1 and x plus 1. So that gives us two possibilities immediately, and that is r equals plus minus one. And in fact, those are the only possible values of r. Okay, so now we'll just work at these one at a time. So let's say our first case is the case when r is equal to one. Now let's exploit that using f of x. So that means that 1,988 times x squared plus a times x plus 8,891, so like I said, that's equal to f of x, is in fact equal to 1,988 times x minus 1 times x minus u. So we know we have one as a root, now u will be that other root. But now let's multiply out this right hand side and observe that we get 1988x squared minus 1988 times u plus one times x and then plus 1988u. Again, that's just from multiplying everything out. But now we can set the coefficients of x equal to each other and the constant terms equal to each other. That is, we'll have this number a here equal to minus 1988 u plus one, whereas we'll have 8,891 equal to 1988 u. So let's write that as a system of equations. So we have, like I said, 1988u is equal to 8891. And then we have minus 1988u minus 1988 equal to a, where I just multiplied out that stuff that we have over there on the right-hand side of the equation. 
Okay, nice. But now observe that we can plug this first equation into the second equation. That is, we'll take this 8891, which is equal to 1988U, and plug it right here where we see 1988U. And that means that we'll have A equal to minus 8891 minus 1988. But then simplifying that, you'll see that we get A equals minus 10,897. Okay, and then well, what do we really need to do from here to make sure everything works out? Well, we need to plug that into the second equation and make sure that we get an appropriate factorization. That is, we'll go up here and we'll say, okay, well now g of x is equal to 8,891x squared minus 10,897x and then plus 1,988. And then we'll check that we have g evaluated at one equals zero. Well, that's a pretty easy check, but that tells us that g of x has one as a root. In other words, we have g of x equals x minus one times something. Okay, so let's see what happens for the other case, the case when r is negative one. We're gonna use essentially the same strategy for the second case when r is negative one, but now let's use g of x as a tool. Of course, it doesn't really matter. We could use f of x or g of x, and we should get the same value of a. So let's see, we have 8,891x squared, and then plus a times x plus 1,988. Well, we know that's equal to g of x, which in turn factors with this constant term times x minus one times x minus v. Sorry, that should be x plus one because, well, we're taking our common zero to be negative one. But now let's multiply out this right-hand side. So we have 8,891x squared. And then next we'll have plus 8,891 times one minus v times x, and then we'll have minus 8,891 times v. But now we'll play the same game that we did before. So we have a system of equations. We'll have a is equal to this number right here, 8,891, by looking at the linear terms. And then we'll have 1988 is equal to this minus 8891 times v. So let's see, bringing that down, so this magenta equation is 8891 minus 8891 v equals a, whereas this orange underlined part gives us minus 8,891 V equals 1988. And then we'll make this last substitu substitution for this large number times V, and that it'll essentially finish it all off. So doing that calculation, we'll get A is 10,897, which, well, it's like exactly the same, but with an opposite sign of what we got for this first case. So there's some nice like symmetry between these two cases, and that's a good place to stop.